okay so guys uh, yesterday we started with uh, more circle all right and you have seen how to draw more circle for a 2d stress system and if you recall your more circle was a graphical way of calculating principal stresses another way so before going into different cases and solving some numericals i just quickly want you people to show uh, what additional uh, more circle can uh, give us what it additional thing we can calculate. So if you people recall on horizontal axis, we have normal stresses on vertical axis, we have shear stresses. And when you plot more circle, now I'm not revising uh, how to plot it, but you plot your Sigma X, you plot your Sigma Y, then you draw your tau X, Y, and you join this line. And with this radius, you draw a circle, something like this you observed. I mark few important points here. So what is center of more circle, guys? If you recall, please recall this formula because we'll be using to calculate all the uh, important conditions. So when we say center of more circle, we have seen its coordinate will be sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 comma 0. So an important note here that more circle always lie on x axis. All right, it can never be like this or like this or like this. On x axis, it can move anywhere. So, on x axis, it can be like this, it can be like this, it can be here, it can be exactly at the center, it can be anything on the x axis. So, if you see, x coordinate will change depending upon sigma x and sigma y, but y is always zero. So, it will always remain on x axis. All right, then we have seen how to calculate radius of more circle so if you recall radius of more circle we have seen two formulas one is with the help of principal stresses or the other one is we have this under root formula right sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 whole square plus tau square x y use any one of the formula to calculate radius now everyone knows once we know center, once we know radius, we can draw the circle and then we can answer the uh, questions. So this is the center, this is the radius of more circle and this is also nothing but equals to tau max if you recall. So this is the tau max value, right? This is the radius of more circle and this is also tau max. You can see you cannot have tau more than this. Now, the another thing which I want you people to understand here is, okay, we know this is sigma 1, which is our major principal stress, and this is sigma 2, which is our minor principal stress. Now, guys, Mohr circle also helps us to calculate stress at any angular position. Now, what do you mean by this? I don't know how many of you recall, but we have derived one formula to calculate sigma and tau on any arbitrary plane. If you people recall, we have derived that equation. Let me just quickly write that equation. So if you want to calculate sigma, that is normal stress, on any plane at an angle theta, if you recall the formula was this, right? Sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 into cos 2 theta plus tau x y sine 2 theta, correct? And you can also calculate tau on any angle. So they can give you sigma x, sigma y, tau x y and ask us to calculate what is sigma and tau on a plane at an angle of 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, whatever they ask, we can calculate using this formula. This is sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 into sine 2 theta minus tau x y cos 2 theta. If they don't want at any particular angle, then they can ask, please tell us principal stresses, maximum shear stress, principal plane, all these things they can ask. So as per now, if you see in Mo circle, we can calculate principal stresses, but Mo circle can also give you these values. Again, in exam, we will use the formulas because you cannot draw more circle with respect to graph papers, right? But still, how to calculate at any particular angle? So if you see, 
if they say calculate at 30 degrees. So what you need to do in Mohr circle is you go to this line and from this line you calculate the angle 2 theta. I'm again repeating this. You go to your reference line which you have used to draw your Mohr circle. No one will do this in exam. I'm just giving you the theory. From this line you go to an angle to theta and draw a line. This line will hit more circle at certain point, right? At this point, you have some normal stress and some shear stress, which is given by this formula. Now, why two theta is present? If you see in the formula, also we have framed our equation or derived our equation in terms of two theta. So in diagram also, it is two theta. Now, meaning if they say question, they will not do this in your exam, but they will do this uh, in conceptuals. I'll show you the numer numericals. If they say calculate sigma and tau on plane at theta equals to 30 degrees. So in Moha circle, we need to go from this line and draw a line at an angle of 60 degrees and whatever values you can see here your sigma will be some value and here your tau will be some value it will not be principal stresses it will not be maximum shear stress it will be some arbitrary values but how we will solve this in our exam the only way is this Again, we will solve every, every single gate numerical. So please don't worry. I will show you some of the numericals today, but my intention was to make this concept here and then we will enter into <coughs> gate numericals once we have Hooke's law ready. So this is the additional concept. Apart from this, nothing is needed. You just need to remember how to calculate center of Mohr circle and how to calculate radius of Mohr circle. Now, once this is understood now what we're going to do is we're going to draw more circle for some important cases right and then we will enter into some numericals and you will tell me how to draw the more circle for this all right so let's draw more circle for axial loading now what do you mean by axial loading you have a system Let's say you have a bar and you are pulling this bar with some force F. Now my question to you people is when you have a bar of force F, always try to remain in 2D only. All right. So what kind of stresses will be generated? This is important and you have to understand this. So if we going to take a small element here, Right? This is our stress element. And then if I zoom this stress element, this is my 2D stress element now. And you people can expect because it's an axial load condition, there will be only axial stresses, which will be sigma x. No one is pulling in y direction, so there will be no sigma y. No one is providing any shear force, so there will be no shear stress. And hence, it is known as an axial load system. I'll go to different cases when we'll move forward. Now, what is the formula for calculating the sigma x? Although it is not required now, but still, uh, you should know this. Stress is nothing but equals to force divided by area. Area of this cross-section. This must be an area here, right? It must be a 3D bar. So we are talking about this area. Force divided by area. But I'm not interested in this magnitude. I'm only interested in, you know, sigma x. What, so what is sigma x here? Sigma x is a number. You have some value, positive number. What is sigma y here? In axial load, only in x direction. There is nothing like sigma y. What is tau x y? There is nothing like shear stress. So tau x y is zero. So for this case, where stresses are these, how our Moha circle will look like. This is what we need to draw. You know what is the diagram for Moha circle, right? Let's say this is our 
normal stresses and let's say this is our shear stresses. So I'll give you an easiest way. First thing what you do is you calculate the center for Mohr circle. What is center for Mohr circle? Sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 comma 0. Now in this case, sigma x is, let it be, don't worry about force in it. You will get a number in your exam. But let's say this is sigma x. So my center of Mohr circle will be sigma x plus 0 divided by 2 comma 0. It's a positive number, right? So let's say center of Mohr circle is here. The only thing I want you people to understand is that because this is tension, so sigma x is positive. If sigma x is positive, sigma x by 2 is also positive. Correct? So I've drawn the center. Now, next thing we need to calculate is the radius of Mohr circle. So because I don't have sigma 1 and sigma 2 as of now, so I'll use the second formula. So what will be the formula, guys? What will be radius of Mohr circle here? Please help me. So radius of this Mohr circle will be sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 whole square plus tau square under root. So if you see, you again get this as sigma x by 2. So your center is sigma x by 2, comma 0. Your radius is sigma x by 2. Can you people imagine what will be the circle now? I hope you people understand your circle will look something like this. Where center is sigma x by 2. Radius is sigma x by 2. This is also radius, which is sigma x by 2. This is also radius which is sigma x by 2. Now, you know radius is, if, if they frame a question in your exam, for this condition, please tell me what are principal stresses. Can anyone tell me what will be principal stresses now? Although you should know this, but still, what is principal stress here, guys? This is one principal stress. This is another principal stress. Correct? What is this? This is tau max. So what are principal stresses? Our first principal stress is nothing but equals to sigma x. Our second principal stress is nothing but equals to zero. Our tau max is nothing but equals to radius of Mohr circle is nothing but equals to sigma x by two and so on. We have already calculated center. So this is how a Mohr circle is drawn. All right. Now I want you people to understand one thing. Before drawing Mohr circle, you should know this. When your stress system is like this, this is sigma x. There is no sigma y. There is no tau x y. Guys, seeing this only, we can say that the first principal stress is this. Second principal stress is zero because there is no principal stress. And if you see, there are no shear stresses. And hence, our principal stresses are actually shown here. So without drawing the Mohr circle, you should know what is your sigma 1 and sigma 2. Mohr circle also precisely give you the values. Please tell me, is this case very much clear? I want every one of you to respond on this because I, I should know that is this explanation fine or I should explain you this in a different way or more detailed way. Is it okay for everyone? Okay. So, Archana, which, which part do you want me to explain? I will do that because let's do this on the first slide only. But I want to understand what which part I should explain from radius. Do you understand how we have calculated the radius? Is this clear? Now, you tell me. What is, once you know the center of a circle, center, what is the distance? This is sigma x by 2, right? Radius is also sigma x by 2. So can I say that this is the radius and then you simply draw a circle? If radius is sigma x by 2, Archana, 
u this is zero right this is sigma x by 2 then what is this this is sigma x right and this is zero you understand the meaning of radius Achala, if it is not clear please tell me again so is this point clear or you want me to your question was something else this is clear right okay good it will be more clear because we need to solve more numericals let's go to second case all right so more circle for torsional loading you will have all this in your detailed syllabus because we need to study torsion separately we need to study uh, axial load separately but as of now i'm just giving you an insight so when we say torsional load means you are applying a torque to a system so you have a shaft all right something like this and to this shaft let's say you have applied a torque you are twisting it this is known as torsional loading all right now you will learn this later but when we have torsional loading right the only stresses which are developed are nothing but shear stresses so what you do you take a stress element and you zoom it and the, you will observe under torsion there will be only shear stresses developed there will be no normal stresses meaning sigma x is equals to zero sigma y equals to zero and shear stresses let's say tau x y you will don't worry about this formula now but you should know that it is a number t by j into r don't worry about this how what is t by j into r but you should know that only shear stresses are developed so if you see sigma x is zero sigma y is zero tau x y is present and this is how the stress element looks like now, guys, this is important for you. This element is known as pure shear element. You can imagine this with the name pure shear. There is no normal stress present in the system, which is referred to as torsional loading. So in torsion, you have pure shear. Now, whatever case they give in our exams, if you know this, you can happily draw the Mohr circle. So what is the Mohr circle representation. I will draw all my normal stresses here, shear stresses here. Let's first calculate what is radius of Mohr circle or center of Mohr circle. So if you see center of Mohr circle formula is sigma x plus sigma y by 2 comma 0. In this case, sigma x is 0, sigma y is 0. So if you substitute here, your center comes out to be 0 comma 0. So we have a circle with center at origin. First thing we understood. Now second is radius of Mohr circle. Correct? And you know the radius of Mohr circle formula. Okay, let me write it again. Sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 whole square plus tau square xy under root. Now in this case, this term goes to 0 because sigma x is 0, sigma y is 0. And if you take an under root, you will get your answer as tau xy. So radius is coming as tau xy. So now what we need to do is we need to go to center and draw a circle with a radius of tau xy. What do you mean by circle with radius of tau xy? This will be tau xy. This will be tau xy, this will be tau xy, this will be tau xy. And you know, this is also tau max, right? Now, but the beautiful thing which you have observed here is that when you draw a circle with center at origin and radius at tau xy, you people see you have hit your system at two points which will be sigma 1 and which will be sigma 2. Meaning, your principal stresses came out to be plus minus tau xy. 
So for a pure shear system, for a pure shear system, your principal stresses is equals to only numbers. I have seen people uh, having this doubt sir, how shear stress are equals to principal stresses. Guys, this is a number. I'll give you a simple example and I really hope this will be clear. I will talk in numbers. Let's say someone says a pure shear system is this and say they say this is 20 mega Pascal. Let's take an example. And they ask, please calculate your principal stresses. All right. Now let's go to over basics. If someone asks me to calculate principal stresses, I will simply go to my formula. Sigma X plus Sigma Y divided by two plus minus under root. Sigma X minus Sigma Y divided by two whole square plus tau square X Y. You people see Sigma X is zero. Sigma Y is zero. Sigma X is zero. Sigma Y is zero. So what is the formula guys? Plus minus tau X Y. And what is tau X Y value? 20, right? Meaning you're saying me that your Sigma one is plus 20 MPA and your Sigma two is minus 20 MPA. That's what you're saying. Now, what do you mean by this? What is the principal plane? So you have calculated principal stresses. Now let's calculate principal plane also. So principal plane, if you people recall, is given as one by two tan inverse of two tau xy divided by sigma x minus sigma y. Correct? Sigma x is zero. Sigma y is zero. That means this is 2 tau xy divided by 0. Anything divided by 0 is infinity. Tan inverse infinity is 90 degrees. And 90 divided by 2 is 45 degrees. Meaning, you are saying your first principal plane is at an angle of 45. Note the, yeah, 45. And on this plane at an angle of 45, you have these principal stresses acting. Now, what do you mean by this? Physically, the meaning of this term is if you rotate this body by 45 degrees, let me do it here. If you rotate this body by 45 degrees, so rotate this body by 45 degrees. Here, it is pure shear. But if you rotate it by 45 degrees, you will have normal stress acting like this. You will have another normal stress acting like this, which is compressive. You see one is plus 20, another one is minus 20. And that's how the system looks like. So I hope you understand when we use the word that your principal stresses is equal to plus minus tau x y. Is this more circle clear guys? This is I have used formulas to calculate this just so that you people understand. And more circle need only center and radius, right? And we simply draw the circle. Tell me, is this part clear to all of you? Let's go to third case. All right. The third case is, let's say, hydrostatic case. Now, I have, what do you mean? What's that TJ by R? No, no, no. Uh, <clears throat> when you apply a torque, right, Rohit, the formula to calculate the shear stress value is T divided by polar moment of inertia into radius. Don't worry about it. Just imagine there is a number here like this. As of now, you don't worry from where torque formula is coming from, where bending formula will come. Don't worry about that. The only thing you need to understand here is if sigma x is 0, sigma y is 0, and tau xy is a non-zero number, then how the Mohr circle looks like. So for pure shear, how the Mohr circle looks like. Shear value the shear stress value can be 100, 20, 50, minus 20. It can be anything. Don't worry about that. 
Is it okay? Clear, Rohit? Okay. So I'll go to third case, hydrostatic case. I have explained this before also in my uh, video, but let's say <clears throat> hydrostatic case is one in which same stresses act in all directions and hydro means water. So when you put anything in water, same amount of pressure is applied from all the boundaries compressive. So in simple words, it is something like this. You have a body which is subjected to same stresses, normal stresses from outside. This is nothing but pressure exerted by water. Don't worry about it. My intention is this. Can anyone tell me what is sigma x here? Anyone? This will be minus sigma. Correct? What is sigma y here? Minus sigma. What is tau xy here? Zero. When you put anything in water, the water just try to compress your body. There is no shear. Now for this case, forget about this naming. When you have sigma x, same as sigma y, and tau xy is zero, how our Mohr circle will look like? You people tell me. What is center of Mohr circle guys? It is sigma x plus sigma y divided by two comma zero. What is sigma x minus sigma? What is sigma y minus sigma divided by two comma zero? So what is center for this? Minus sigma comma zero. That means you are on x axis on the negative side. So let's say this is my center minus sigma comma zero. So I have calculated the center of Mohr circle. Now next thing is you need to calculate the radius of Mohr circle, which is sigma x minus sigma y divided by two whole square. Okay. Before going into this, can anyone tell me what are principal stresses here? Can anyone tell me what is sigma 1 and sigma 2? Anyone? Seeing the diagram. Manish, Rohit, Rachana. Yeah, Dev, good. If you see this stress system, there are no shear stresses, right? So this should be your sigma 1 and this should be your sigma 2. So both are minus sigma, right? Yeah. So if you want to calculate radius of Mohr circle, ideally speaking, you can do this also. Where this is minus sigma, this is again minus sigma divided by 2, which came out to be 0. So radius of Mohr circle for this case is coming as 0. So you have center at this point radius is zero radius zero means it's a point guys so for hydrostatic case more circle is a point its radius is zero radius is zero means you are talking about a point is this diagram clear for everyone So what, whatever question comes in your exam, right? You just people look, what is sigma x? What is sigma y? What is tau? And then decide what is the correct answer. All right. Perfect. <clears throat>